Welcome to the Communicate Your Results video tutorial. In this video, we will review statistical uncertainty and discuss how to view and share results in reports, tables, and maps. It is important to note that, like nearly all scientific models, Hazus analyses contain some level of uncertainty in their results. For example, suppose a marathon runner runs 10 practice races to train for an upcoming event. The fastest time they achieve is 3 hours, and the slowest time is 4 hours. We could use the times of the practice races and statistical modeling to estimate it will take the runner 3.5 hours to complete the 11th race. But there is some uncertainty in that prediction since we do not have complete data for our inputs. What if the runner finished nine races in less than three and a half hours and an injury or inclement weather caused one four hour result? Then a better prediction for the 11th race may actually be three and a quarter hours. This uncertainty is communicated in different ways, but it is most commonly expressed in the form of a range of values and a confidence interval or the probability that a result will fall within that range. So, we would report our runner's predicted finishing time as three and a half hours, a single figure, then add an uncertainty range of plus or minus a quarter hour. If using a confidence interval, it might be appropriate to rephrase this to say, there is a 95% chance that the runner will finish the 11th race between three and a quarter and three and three quarter hours. Hazus operates on a similar principle. Hazus was originally designed for use by decision makers in emergency management situations, so it uses the generalized building and demographic data, damage curves, and other inputs in order to create a statistical estimate of an area's risk, not to provide an exact representation of reality. Since decision makers need information quickly, but may not have time during emergency situations to calculate or communicate confidence intervals in results data, all results are reported as single figures. Applying this to the analogy of a marathon runner, the hazardous result for estimating the 11th race time would be reported simply as three and a half hours, without the quarter hour range or any confidence interval. You will see this demonstrated later in the video when we view Hazus results data in various forms. How much or how little of this uncertainty you discuss when reporting Hazus results will depend on your audience and situation. In emergency response situations, it may not be possible to communicate ranges of uncertainty and your results could be presented as a ballpark figure to fulfill the need for a quick estimate. On the other hand, presenting to an academic audience or using Hazus for research purposes would likely include a discussion on the methodology and uncertainty in results. Since Hazus does not provide the confidence interval or range of possibilities when reporting results, you will have to estimate approximate confidence intervals or, at a minimum, note that an uncertainty range exists. Note that you can produce higher quality results by updating inventory, hazard data, and other parameters to reduce uncertainty in your analyses. Now that we've reviewed statistical uncertainty inherent to the model, we're ready to discuss various methods used to communicate Hazus results. Hazus provides three methods of displaying data from the various scenarios, reports, tables, and maps. When choosing between a report, table, or map, ask yourself who your audience is, what you plan to do with the data, and what level of detail you need to provide. We'll begin with summary reports. Summary reports consolidate your results data by a selected category and present the outcomes by occupancy type or construction class. Due to its broad scope, visually appealing presentation, and succinct summary capabilities, reports are a popular vehicle for communicating data with decision makers. For our example, we will review the global summary report from our earthquake hazard scenario. This will create a convenient, summarized PDF with all of the results data from this earthquake scenario. This is a popular report because it summarizes the most common results categories of interest to Hazus users. More detailed reports for specific components of the model, such as casualty analysis, are also available. 
To access the Global Summary Report, open the Results menu and choose Summary Reports. Select the Other tab, choose the Global Summary Report report name, and click View. As we scroll through, you can see that the report displays the results data in multiple ways, including graphs, charts, tables, and text. Some results are presented both graphically as well as in a tabular breakdown with specific results values aggregated for your entire study region. This is important for decision makers as information is presented clearly and there is little to no need for further parsing. However, notice that these are single figures and do not contain a range or confidence interval. It is important to remember that these are estimates only and they should be presented as such when communicating the results with decision makers. Summary reports are excellent resources since you can generate a number of these reports quickly, allowing you to rapidly and easily communicate a wide range of results. However, these are only summaries and you will need to use other methods to view more specific and detailed information. Summary reports are limited in that they do not provide the values for each module nor comparative context. They are not interactive and they are not geospatial representations of the model. Another common method of presenting results is in tables. Tables generally provide more detail and are more valuable to data analysts who want to dive deeper into the raw results data. For example, let's look at the total casualties of our study region, just as we did in the summary report. Open the results menu, hover on the casualties submenu, and select by occupancy. A dialog box appears with the results data in a grid display sorted by tract and severity level. You can change the displayed data by choosing a different building type or inside versus outside location setting in their respective dropdowns, or by selecting a different tab to change if the scenario were to occur at nighttime, daytime, and commute time. As you can see, the grid contains specific numbers, providing extremely detailed and specific data to explore and manipulate. You can map or print the raw data by selecting a column and clicking the Map button at the bottom of the box. The major benefit of viewing the data in tables is that while reports consolidate data into categories, tables maintain a high level of specificity and contextual information. While the specificity may not be relevant to a decision maker, an analyst may want to focus on data that's displayed in the table and interact with it, but not need the packaging provided by running a report. This allows for higher level data analysis that can be used to guide future decision making. A third common format for presenting results data is through maps. As shown in the previous step and in the View Your Results video, it is possible to visualize your results data layer by layer directly on your study region in Hazus. Mapping creates useful visualizations that quickly communicate the magnitude and location of impacts in your study region in an intuitive and accessible way. However, when creating maps, it is necessary to consider how you present the data since different scales, colors, or graphic representations will influence the reader's understanding of the results and can lead to different conclusions. It is possible to create both printable and digital maps directly from Hazus. Once you have your data layers on your study region, open the View menu and click Layout View. Here, you can begin customizing your map with results data layers, text, legend, and other elements by using the table of contents and the insert menu options. Once you have created your map, you can save it as a map package, PDF, or JPEG, or upload it to ArcGIS Online. Alternatively, you can simply export the data from Hazus and create a map in another program that best suits your intended audience and purpose. Congratulations! In this video, you learned about statistical uncertainty and how to communicate data in report, table, and map form. Look for more Hazus video tutorials on the FEMA YouTube channel.